Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Bear Investing. So uh, this is just a weekly update that I do every single week on this channel. Every Wednesday, I have a new video. So if you want to keep track of a Canadian focused uh, dividend portfolio with some American stocks uh, here and there, and you don't want to miss my buys and sells, uh, please subscribe to the channel, like the video and leave a comment in the description. So the total portfolio value is at $13,634.43. So I'm getting closer to hitting my goal of reaching a $15,000 portfolio. But my main goal is just to increase a passive stream of income to make money while I sleep. So I'm going to first talk about a uh, stock I sold, which was Granite REIT. So there's nothing wrong with Granite REIT. I'm just going to say that straight up to anybody that's in the position. Um, I didn't sell it because I don't believe in the company. It's just that I looked at the dividend growth rate of the company and they don't grow their dividends that fast. I mean, not compared to, say, a Canadian bank. So I decided to sell the position and uh, move the profits that I made on that position into TD Bank and Scotiabank. So I, I really went heavy on those positions. And I'll actually be showing a comparison of uh, different stocks that have various starting yields and uh, the effect of that over like a five year period and a 10 year period. And the results may surprise you. So tune in later for that uh, towards the end of the video and I'll just be going through the buys and sells and going through my portfolio in full. So with that said, let's roll the intro. So I'm going to talk about my RRSP account. So uh, with this one, this is my smaller account. I just started it about a week ago. I um, have $233.49 in it. So we're down a little bit, but we just opened it. I only have one stock here, which is Starbucks. And this one has actually declined um, just because the CEO basically said that he's going to um, halt the stock buybacks, which you know, naturally it sent the shares down about 3% or so. And it says here that Starbucks spent nearly $12 billion in 2019 and 2020 combined to buy back its own share. So that really increases your ownership of Starbucks over time without you investing any more money into the company. And it also gives them room to grow the dividend because when a dividend paying company buys back its own shares, it no longer has to pay dividends on those shares because it doesn't have to pay them anymore. They're taken away. Um, and then October, it said it would spend over $20 billion over three years on stock repurchases and dividends. So that is a, a really key reason why I wanted Starbucks is because they they buy back their own shares very, very aggressively. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of uh, union unionization threats um, from the company, from their employees. Uh, so we're going to see what they do. Um, now, Schultz... Mr. Schultz is the founder of Starbucks, so he's taking, you know, the role of interim CEO and, you know, the shares went up 5% and then he, he comes along and throws investors like a big surprise saying, yeah, we're not going to do the share buybacks that we said we were going to do back in October. Um, so they say they're going to invest, take the opportunity to invest money where it will get the best return on multiple levels, proof as a direct investment to show what the company's current focus is. It's kind of vague, um, but it seems like he's trying to um, slow down this union unionization talk, maybe throw more money at the baristas or make improvements to the store. Um, so this is definitely like negative news for Starbucks, at least in the short term. Um, but I think if the employees push really, really hard for unionization, I think that'll just push Starbucks faster towards automation. Uh, just like other restaurants like, say, McDonald's have done where, you know, you have um, a menu screen that you order off of rather than from a barista. And maybe there's a a robot that basically makes your, your coffee for you and, may, and maybe you have fewer employees. So um, 
we'll see how this goes. Um, I think this will definitely impacts Starbucks in a negative in the short term. Um, so definitely this is a great reason to dollar cost average into a position because you have no idea what's going to happen and you can get surprises like this and uh, your stock can start to fall. So I'll definitely be a little bit careful buying Starbucks right now just because the share buybacks are off the table. I'm not really sure what the CEO is planning to do necessarily, but they're still a growing company. They grow that dividend. So I'm not concerned about the company in the long term, but in the short term, yeah, there's definitely definitely got to be careful with this holding. And now let's take a look at the TFSA. So that's up to $13,391.06 or up 1545.20. And let's just take a peek at the position. So uh, the first two days of this week are a bit, little bit red, uh, but overall things are you know generally trending up. Apple's doing fine. Uh, Gonquin, Baba. I actually bought another share of Brookfield Asset Management. So uh, this is a great value investing company that has, has consistently outperformed the S&P 500 over the past 20, 30 years easily uh, by a fair margin. Uh, they just hold a lot of different assets and uh, they will buy things when they are undervalued with very low risk to the investor with very, very high upside. So love this company. I want to make it a core holding of mine and just increase the position. Um, speaking of which, uh, I bought a lot more Scotia Bank, so we're up to 13.464 shares. So I think I acquired a little two and a bit, like two or three shares of this actually. Um, so we're up to 13.4 shares. And ENS, uh, which is our just a way to invest in Enbridge, but get a 10%, well, roughly uh, dividend yield. It's a little bit shy of 10% right now, but. Um, it's actually trading underneath the NAV price, uh, so it's a little bit undervalued, so not a bad time to pick some up, increase our monthly dividend income, and Enbridge is a great company to be exposed to, pretty pretty stable, mature company, and uh, very reliable income for this. I also bought a little bit more Google, so we're up to 0.10%, so... Uh, once uh, Google splits in July, we should have about two full shares of Google. So they are doing a stock split then, um, which doesn't affect the price of the stock. But of course, you know, it usually it doesn't hurt the stock that is more accessible to people that are completely locked out of this if they're not on a platform that has fractional trades like Wealth Simple does. And Loblaws has actually been just going on a crazy run. It's It's gone up so much since I bought it. Um, I'm not adding to it right now uh, just because I think there are better opportunities in the market. Um, when I was buying it, it was like $100 a share. So suddenly it jumped up, which is unfortunate, but I'm just going to um, acquire other companies that I think are presenting a little higher value right now. And we also picked up one more share of TELUS. So I went up to 22 shares. I uh, reinvested the dividend right back into this holding. Um, so we're, we're I'm, I think I'll just pick up like one share of this every quarter. Unless it has a significant dip, then I'll, I'll load up and get more TELUS. I just, it's a little overvalued at the moment, um, but I still love the company. They raise their dividends very, very aggressively. So really, really matches what I want this portfolio to do, to just have a growing stream of passive income. And uh, I really went heavy into TD. Um, I got two more shares of this, so we're up to 15.4 shares of TD. Um, the, the acquisition of that US bank, um, First Horizon, is going to accelerate their growth. And I'm, I'm just so bullish on the company. And even recently in the news, um, they're saying that the big six Canadian banks think there's going to be a big rate hike uh, next week. So that's going to basically be bad for people that are, you know, have a ton of debt, um, either in their business or um, for for housing. Like if you're if you're really over leveraged and you know you you have so much debt on places you can barely afford now, uh, the rates going up is definitely going to hurt you, but it's going to benefit the banks so I th and the banks are going to benefit very strongly from that. And Tesla actually had a record number of deliveries. So they actually delivered the the most out of any quarter. Um, I believe it's about 70% um, compared to Q1 of 2021. So 
Tesla's growing very quickly despite the um, the shutdown of their Shanghai factory, uh, just because China has a lot of issues with COVID and the, they're just locking down cities, shutting down businesses. So this definitely affecting their numbers, but again, it's just a temporary setback for Tesla and I'm not too concerned about that. They're still on pace to do about 1.2 million, which is still a great increase over the previous year. And here's a little spreadsheet I made to uh, show the differences in uh, dividend growth and how important it is as a factor. So here I have a couple stocks. So I have like Granite REIT, which is one that I sold out of that paid star has a 3.31% starting yield, TD with 3.54, Scotia with 4.52, Starbucks with a very low 2.22. Um, and I just calculated uh, based on their last five year average on what the rate they increase the dividend at. So with Granite Reit, we just increased it by 4.38%, TD 7.91, uh, Scotiabank, we raised it by 4.91, and Starbucks has a 16.7% annual growth rate. So let's just take a look at what happens in year five. So in year five, Granite Reit is giving a 4% yield. Um, TD is giving a 5% yield. Scotia is paying a 5.74% yield, and then Starbucks surprisingly starts paying a 4.8% yield. So uh, you can see that even if you have a lower starting yield, if your dividend grows at a very fast rate, you can easily and quickly exceed um, a lower growth dividend yield company. And I just don't find the growth rate of Granite Reit to be that great. Um, plus the, the Canadian banks will benefit from rising interest rates um, in the short term. So definitely going to favor the banks and they, they buy back shares. They increase their dividends very aggressively. So there's a lot of value to be had in the banks. I have a lot more certainty with the banks and they provide more passive income and growing income than granite would. So I just decided to just load up on, on TD Bank and Scotia. So it's about 20% of my portfolio across those two stocks. So I really believe in them. And then um, if we go fast forward to year 10, uh, we can see that Granite is paying a 5% yield. I mean, not that great um, after starting with 3.31 for a decade, we're only at 5%. TD basically doubles to 7.58 and Scotia goes to 7.3. And Starbucks actually would be the highest assuming that you know they maintain the same dividend growth rate. Of course, things can change, it's not a guarantee, but it just goes to demonstrate that, you know, even a low starting yield today can quickly grow into the future if the company continues growing and buying back its shares. Um, so surprisingly, the best company in terms of just overall dividends, you know, earned as a percentage of capital, uh, your yield on cost, basically, um, Scotiabank is still the winner. Um, because they start at the highest yield of 4.5. They're kind of in the middle of, you know, raising their dividend by 5%, but overall still beat uh, TD. But TD does actually pass Scotiabank in year 10, and that should continue uh, beyond. But Scotiabank, quite good. Uh, Starbucks, big surprise <laughs> with 10%. Um, so Starbucks is actually like the second best uh, in terms of overall uh, return uh, from dividends and TD's third, so pretty close to BNS. It does have a higher um, compound annual growth rate, so uh, give it more time, like maybe 15 or 20 years, TD Bank could actually surpass all of them. And I mean, Starbucks is just absolutely insane. You can see the effect that having a 15% um, dividend growth rate can have on even a low starting yield of 2%. But of course, this all depends on your investment time horizon. If you have 10, 20, 30 years, then you know maybe you don't wanna chase the highest yield necessarily. Or if you do, you can go with something like Scotiabank where you have a very high starting yield and they grow the dividend at a very good rate and you do very well. You have a good dividend now and you'll have a great dividend in the future. Um, if you're a bit younger, you can even go for lower yielding investments because they can quickly outpace everything. We see year 10, I think this is gonna continue to outperform over the long term, assuming Starbucks continues its growth. Um, so if you like the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. What do you think about 
uh, dividend growth versus like high yield now. Uh, any thoughts in the comments? All right, have a great day, everyone.